people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. The noticeable sights and sounds at the fights this past weekend between reigning undisputed champions Clarissa Shields, Shields and Alicia Baumgartner. Clarissa was in attendance because she was commentating, whereas Alicia, she was just taking in the fights. And this was inevitable. The verbal exchange, the war of words. Which just seems like a lot of noise to me, a lot of noise, because... Are they gonna fight? Clarissa campaigns at much, much higher weights than Alicia does, but then again... Alicia is the one who asked for it. Yeah. She's the one who expressed an interest in facing Clarissa, and Clarissa seems to have taken it personal. My thoughts. Maybe the reason that Alicia Baumgartner felt comfortable enough to call out Clarissa is because she sees how Clarissa pals around with Franchon Cruz. Clarissa and Franchon, they actually fought in what was their pro debut. They were both debuting as professionals, and they fought. But they're still friends now. On that premise, maybe Alicia figured that there wouldn't be any hard feelings. It's just business between friends. Where Clarissa seems to have taken it personal that Alicia is calling her out. And now she's responding the only way she knows how. You don't get Clarissa Shields started. She won't shut up if you do. What Alicia is trying to do is hold Clarissa to her word because Clarissa did say that she would be willing to move down to 147 pounds for the girls that are there. What Alicia is proposing is that they fight there, where Clarissa is now moving the goalpost. Now she's saying it has to be at 154. Likely because she can't make 147. She's kind of going back on that, but look at them. Look at Clarissa. Look at Alicia. There is a noticeable discrepancy in size. Being honest with you, I'm more of a fan of Alicia Boomgartner than I am of Clarissa Shields, but Clarissa is noticeably bigger. Thicker. Even if the fight is a money fight, 
in its own way, if you could make it, because it is garnering attention. People are talking. The discrepancy in size for me is a bit too much. Maybe too much for Alicia to overcome. She might be biting off more than she can chew if they actually make it. But are they going to make it? Or are these two just making a lot of noise, shouting at each other for the sake of shouting at each other? Uh, Alicia is supposed to be en route to fight Delphine Pursoon, her mandatory challenger. Clarissa, God only knows what Clarissa's up to, who she's going to fight, if she's going to fight, and when. So is all of this just much ado about nothing? Americans and their penchant for being all swept up in these noisy affairs. Caddy. How whenever the Americans are involved, what boxing often devolves into is the shade rumor. Vlad TV, just one of those gossip columns. Yeah. Clarissa is only responding to an expressed desire from Alicia Baumgartner. But if the fight got made and Clarissa won, are we supposed to give her credit for fighting someone so much smaller than she is? Did people all of a sudden forget how weight classes work? Between all of that Davis versus Inui crap and this... Did the people in America forget that weight classes exist for a reason? These two don't like each other. Alicia started it, and Clarissa is only responding to her, but that in and of itself doesn't make this any less ridiculous. Alicia is a 130 pounder, whereas Clarissa has fought as high as 168, and God only knows how heavy she walks around. Come on. There are plenty of fights between 126, 130, 135, as high as 140 for Alicia Baumgartner. That she shouldn't be calling out Clarissa Shields and Clarissa. While Clarissa is only responding to Alicia's expressed desire to face her at 147. Alicia is only responding to Clarissa's expressed desire to go down there. It's just a lot of noise. Elsewhere in the world of boxing, a second look at Leonard Ellerby's recent postulations in reference to a Davis versus Inui fight. I don't think you see him at 130. I'll just throw out a hypothetical. If the little guy, Inui, that they say he is that guy, he can fight his behind off. This is a hypothetical, but for some reason, if he came to 130, that's when you go for it. All day. In fairness. The spirit of fairness and transparency. This idea was floated out there originally by Inui's promoter, that if by some chance, one day, Inui ended up at 135, a Davis fight would be a fight that he looks at. But when you consider that he just got to 122. Nobody should be running with this. Inui himself said that he plans on spending the foreseeable future at 122. There are several fights he means to have there before he moves up to 126 let alone 135, that I shouldn't have to tell you. This is not realistic. It never was. And that Leonard Ellerby or anyone else is running with this idea seems to me to be an act of desperation. The same people that will tell you that Devin is too big for Gervonta Davis are telling you that Davis isn't too big for Renewing. What? Javante Davis would only have to move up one weight class to fight Devin, just one. Inui would have to move up several. And where you're telling me that Devin is too big for Gervonta, Gervonta isn't too big for Inui. That's what you're telling me. What they're using as the anchor for this argument is that in terms of height and length, Inui and Gervonta are similar. The tail of the tape. But these are not height classes or length classes. These are weight classes. Weight. Just because Sebastian Fundora is one or two inches taller than Joseph Parker, that doesn't make Sebastian Fundora a heavyweight, now does it? No, it doesn't. So just because he knew he's around the same height as Gervonta, that doesn't make him a lightweight like Gervonta, now does it? No, it doesn't. As Inui's fame grows in the Far East and spills over into the West, you're noticing a lot of people have something against him, that he's based out of Japan instead of America, that he's not fighting here. Why the fuck would he be fighting here if he's already a star over there? After the Stefan Fulton fight, and he knocked that guy out, let's be honest, that made a lot of people angry because they were hoping that the American fighter, who they weren't even supporting before that... Wait, let's restart. These people were not fans of Stefan Fulton the same way they were not fans of Guillermo Brigandiao in truth, they weren't fans of Deontay Wilder. Wait a minute, what? Some of these guys that prop up David Benavidez, they're not really fans of him either. I'm confused. The prevalent pattern with this same group of individuals is always the same. 
As soon as some fighter starts to get attention, starts to build a buzz, starts to get some fame and a name and some value, this same group of people tries to find a way to shake them. I've been seeing it, and I've been seeing it for years, how Guillermo Regandiel was never a big ticket seller, he never did big TV ratings, but as soon as Vasil Lomachenko became popular, they gravitated towards Rigo to be the anti-Loma, towards Wilder to be the anti-Joshua, towards Fulton, to be the anti-Inui, and towards David Benavidez, to be the anti-Canelo. What? That they're not really fans of the fighters they claim to support because they don't really support them. If they supported Rigo, he would've never had to jump up from 122 up to 130 for a fight. The reason he did was because he wasn't worth no money. They didn't support him. Deontay Wilder was around for close to 10 years and he never had a buzz. No, he didn't have a buzz or a mass one until they started using him to share Anthony Joshua. They didn't support him. Not really. The best numbers that he ever did were the Tyson Fury fights, but any other time they put him on pay-per-view, they didn't support him. These guys didn't buy it. They didn't support him. They don't support David Benavidez, who's been on pay-per-view two times already, two times by now. These guys didn't buy those fights. The Caleb Plant fight, the Demetrius Andre fight. If they did, why is he back to fighting on undercards? The story is he's supposed to be boxing on Gervonta Davis's undercard this guy used to headline his own shows now he's relegated to being the co-main event to a main event that's not what you do when a guy's numbers are good when a guy is selling no if he's not it's because they don't actually support him they just use him to hate on somebody else they don't support him they don't support anybody or anything so when i think about inui they didn't actually care about Stephen Fulton until he knew he amassed even more popularity. No, they were not supporting Stephen Fulton, and Stephen Fulton himself said as much. He said he didn't feel support here in the United States, in his city. He didn't feel like he was being promoted. And he was a unified champion, unbeaten. They weren't supporting him, because if they were, he never would have had to travel to Japan for his biggest purse. He would have amassed enough marquee value here to where he doesn't have to travel over there, but but if he did, it's because nobody was supporting him. Okay, what's your point? That it's not boxing that motivates these criticisms they have for Inui. It's not boxing, it's hate. Hate of all things foreign. That these people are motivated by hate more than anything else, more than boxing. It's not even about boxing. It's their hate of foreigners. They hate that Inui is a Japanese fighter that doesn't have to bow to Americans because he's a superstar in Japan. They hate that. They hate that he beat what was supposed to be the slick American fighter. Yeah. They hate that. They hate that shit. They hate that Inui is regarded in many, many boxing circles as one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Arguably number one, depending on who you ask. Oh yeah, they hate that shit. They hate it so much that what they're pushing for is for a 122 pounder to move all the way up there to 135 with no regard for how fucking ridiculous that sounds and how cowardly. Because they are cowards. It's hate. hate. That's why the views are so skewed, so obtuse, so nonsensical. You you hate everybody. The silver lining is, he knew he never needed American approval to make history or money. He never did. And while you're belly aching that he doesn't fight here, you fucking bums don't support the guys that do. So who really needs you? Who cares what you think? What you think and who you approve of doesn't seem to put money in American fighters' pockets, let alone Japanese ones. So who cares what you think, you fucking parasites? Elsewhere in the world of boxing as it pertains to David Benavidez, who I just mentioned. David was at the fights too. David was at the Hitchens versus Lemos fight this weekend in support of his stablemate, Diego Pacheco, who's trained by his father. And David was noticeably inebriated, intoxicated, which gave rise to a lot of criticism. Perhaps that's why he's issued a public apology. He said, I just want to take this time to apologize to all my fans and to the people that seen me last night drunk. I had one too many drinks and made a complete fool of myself myself. This will never, ever happen again. I don't even hold it against him. I don't think it's a big deal, but some people do. It's bad optics. For him it is because this is the same guy that lost the title 
due to substance abuse in another form. He lost his title the first time because he was treating his nose and sniffing coke. The second time it was because he blew the weight. He didn't make the 168 pound limit. So when you see this same guy ahead of what's supposed to be the Vozdik fight. Remember that the Vozdik fight is supposed to go down on the Javante Davis versus Frank Martin undercard. And remember that at this time, it looks like Javante Davis already started training for his fight. Well, David Benavidez already started drinking for his. Spat optics. Because here you have a fighter who has a history of fucking up. He's on the same schedule as Javante Davis, set the box on the same show, but while Javante is training, David is drinking. Javante and Frank Martin are training. They're getting ready to fight. I would assume that Oleksandr Vozdik is doing the same thing, while David Benavidez, David, is off somewhere drinking. And... It's bad optics because of his history. Some will highlight that Canelo Alvarez was once publicly intoxicated, once he was inebriated, but that was after a fight, immediately after a fight at a post-fight celebration, not beforehand, not ahead of one. Like David. So it's bad optics, at least to some people it is. To me, it's just a matter of fact situation because I'm a cause and effect guy. Yeah. I'm a causality guy. If you want to treat yourself to a few bros, a few beers, you can do that, but there are consequences. The same way there were consequences for Errol Spence Jr. not living like a fighter, there could be consequences for you. If you want to roll the dice, go ahead. It's a free country. I'm not your father, not your manager, not your trainer, not your promoter. I'm not your community leader to wag my finger in your face, tell you what to do. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. It's your funeral. But I don't think it's at all encouraging that you may be facing the most formidable fighters that you've ever faced. One in Oleksandr Vozdik and presumably the winner of Better Beef versus Bivol or Canelo, if you're lucky enough, and how you're occupying your time is with alcoholic brews. I remember a few years ago, Andre Vard stated that there are principal sins a fighter cannot commit. What were his Ten Commandments for a boxer? Something like that. Staying away from drugs and alcohol. Your body is a temple. Your body is your money maker, not just your fists. And what you put in it, it has an effect. So if this is what you're doing, you can do it. Other fighters do. Let's be honest. It's not like David is the only fighter that might be drinking or might be smoking or might be doing something that he really shouldn't be doing that could have palpable consequences later on. He's not the only one, but that does not exempt him from the consequences, now does it? And because fighters have to make weight, the alcohol hits them harder than me or you. Most people don't know that. David is noticeably big in between fights. To get ready for one, he has to shed a lot of excess, a lot of weight, and the act of cutting weight. For fighters, they get drunk faster than me or you, because of that. So when you see David stumbling around and slurring his speech after just a few brews in spite of his size, that's why. Can't really handle his alcohol. Fuck it. Like I said, it's not the end of the world to me. It's a uh, causality. If this is what you're doing and what you like to do, sooner or later you're gonna pay for it. It's only a matter of time. All things are. All in time. Should David have to apologize for being intoxicated in public. No, no, I mean, I don't think he should have to. He's a grown man. Perhaps he feels so inclined due to all the well wishes and what support he has amassed that in his own mind, it's a poor display. That if he is to live up to the expectations set before him, he needs to do better as a consummate professional and an athlete. You know you're not supposed to be doing that. You can, but if you do, it means what it means.